back to my channel. So I have officially started packing up my library. Uh, we will be moving hopefully in two weeks, I think. But <laughs> we bought a house and that's super exciting. Um, but I have like a million things to do as one does, you know, if they're moving, when they move. So I have started taking stuff off the walls. So if it looks like plain, I mean, all you mostly see is my bookshelf, which is fine. Uh, but that does mean that I need to pre-film a couple of things. I need to pre-film my June TBR game. So here, it is only the 14th of May. Uh, I'm not going to finish my TBR because I went rogue and just started reading whatever the heck I felt like it. I'm probably going to read the same number of books, if not more, but I stuck to the TBR for the first week. Go me! And then I decided that I just wanted to mood read. So I'm gonna do that because I started to go into this reading slump where I didn't read for like four days. And I know four days doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, that is a lot. So I didn't read a single word for four days, except for when I was at school or at work teaching. Of course, I read to my little student we are gonna change one little thing so usually i take six turns and that's that but i have been working so hard on creating this like these are all the books that i own digitally and physically well all the unread books that i own digitally and physically so my red tbr is or i mean my red books are not on here Although that would be cool to add them so that I could get a reread sometimes. I don't know. We'll think about it. But what I'm going to start doing is taking five turns and picking one book from my little TBR sleeve or TBR jar or whatever. I am going to put this into a book of the month box so that I can actually grab any of them. Oh my gosh. There's still more. Okay. Okay, empty. And uh, look at how full this Book of the Month box is. Like, that is crazy. So we're gonna pick one of these and then we're gonna start our game and we're only gonna take five turns. So, you know, just... I, I get so nervous when I do this because, like, I could literally get anything that I own. That's terrifying. I have no control. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. This one, I got one. All right. So this one says, The Woman in the Dark. So, The Woman in the Dark by Vanessa Savage. Oh, it looks like I've already started it. Do I remember? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this follows Sarah and Patrick. And Sarah's mom died. So Patrick moves her to this new house. Or his childhood home. Which is also known as the murder house. So what I'm sensing from this is it could be a haunted house. Or it could be the fact that like a murder took place there many years ago only I think like this dad went crazy and killed all of his family and that's why it's called the murder house uh but I'm wondering if the house is haunted and I also says that there's like marriage issues so I don't know what to expect from this but here we go this is number one all right so here is our little dog he is on free pick because that's where we ended and here is turn number one. I got a one. Okay. Okay. So 
We landed on Secret. So technically, I don't even have to tell you what the book is, but I will tell you what the book is. I'm not going to tell you what the Secret Project is. I did hint at it in May's TBR, though. So for a Secret Project that will be out in the summer, The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. This is a book that I previously DNF'd and am trying to read again. Uh, it's, it says, in a border, boarded up house on a dead end street at the edge of the wild Washington woods lives a family of three. A young girl who isn't allowed outside, not after last time. A man who drinks alone in front of his TV, trying to ignore the gaps in his memory. And a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. And I do think that you get the perspective of the cat. Uh, so I'm going to try this one again. All right. Roll number two. It's right there. Four. One, two, three, four. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So for small town, I like a good small town romance. I almost picked a book that I'm currently reading, but it's only the 14th of May and I will definitely be finishing this book this month. It'll probably be done tomorrow because I'm just loving every second of it. So instead, I went with a thriller. I don't know. I've been reading a lot of thrillers, which doesn't hurt my feelings at all, to be honest with you. But this is Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. Uh, she's like the queen of mystery thriller. Most of her books read more like a mystery than like an intense thriller for me. But I always have fun with them. They're usually like a three to four star for me. And it's just her writing has become kind of like a comfort read for me. And I'm trying to be practical in my choices this month for June because I will be moving. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to actually have to uh, film or read or anything so I'm going to try my hardest to read like more homey more comforting reads and that's what Megan Miranda is for me. I have no idea what Such a Quiet Place is about but usually her books take place in a small town and this kind of looks like Hollow's Edge. This is called Hollow's Edge. And it's a small town where you can find secrets, scandal, and a suspected killer all on one street. That's all, all right. Rule number three is right here. There's the dog. A two. Ah! Oh, one, two. You know, I did this to myself because my prediction was that in July I was going to get a mood reading month. Uh... But then I went all the way back to the start. So that means that I have to take six turns. And we are on, so we're halfway. But I also have to pick a book out of my box of papers. Like my jar or my sleeve. Right now it's just a book of the month box because I have so many. So let's go here I get to pick one of these and then I get to take turn number three again or yeah turn number three okay oh this is an audible bit book this is the first shot which is a prequel to The Last Mrs. Parish, which I've never read. So I don't know what this is about at all. I think it's family drama. Here we are at start again. There we go. Okay, we're at start. Here this is turn number three, a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh! That is so perfect. So we landed on Mom Pick, and it's Mother's Day when we're filming this. 
So I just texted my mom this pile of books over here. I do, I am trying really hard to read a nonfiction every single month. I have yet to read one for the month of May, but I mean, we're only halfway through. So I could definitely still read a nonfiction. Do I know which one yet? No. You know what? I'm like halfway done with a nonfiction. I'm reading Educated by Tara Westover right now, and I'm not liking it. That's why I forgot about it. So that will be my nonfiction, but I thought, you know, one of my goals is to read at least one nonfiction every single month. So my mom is going to pick. All right, so we're right here. Roll number four is a three. One, two, three. Oh, okay. All right, so we landed on scary. For scary, I could choose a different, a few different things. I could go with a real life fear of mine. Like I have a couple of hard hitting contemporaries where like your significant other goes missing or like divorce is you. And that's like a real life fear of mine. I mean, not so much because usually I get along with my husband, you know, I mean, I love him most of the time, all the time, <laughs> but like legitimately it could be a fear or like there's some books that have like spiders in them or on the cover and you know, I mean, that could be scary. In fact, I don't personally love spiders that much, but you know, whatever that, that works. Uh, or I could go with an actual like scary book, like a horror novel or just something that I think is going to scare me. One thing that I thought was like kidnapping because that is terrifying and that's like a real life fear for a lot of people. But I'm going to go with Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke and Other Misfortunes by Eric LaRocca. So this has three short stories, three horror short stories. And uh, I've heard so many good things about Eric LaRocca as an author that like, I had to buy one of his books. So let's see, it tells you about all three of them. A whirlpool of darkness chuns at the heart of a ballet between two lonely women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s, a darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to the most horrific desires. And number two is a couple isolates, isolate themselves on a remote island in an attempt to recover from their teenage son's death when a mysterious young man knocks on their door during a storm. <coughs> And number three, and a man confronts his neighbor when he discovers a strange object object in his backyard, only to be drawn into an even more dangerous game. Three devastatingly beautifully written horror stories from one of the genre's most cutting edge voices. What have you done today to deserve your eyes? So I'm, I'm very excited for this. All right, rule number five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, roll number five. Ooh, okay, book of the month. Okay, I was excited for book of the month until I realized what audiobook that is on hold right now is going to be available like June 2nd for me, three weeks ish. Uh, <laughs> Now I'm terrified, but I am going to put this on my TBR because I own it. And it also works for that secret project that I can't say anything else about. But I'm finally going to be reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin. I don't, I think this is a sci-fi like video game book, but more than that, I think it's the friendship between the two main characters and uh, I am I am terrified <laughs> of this book. I don't read sci-fi uh, but I did get this for free because it made book of the year last year 
And like I said, it works for the secret project that I have had in mind for several months and finally am doing. So yay for me. I think we're finally on my last turn and I haven't gotten a single happy book yet. This is our last roll. Two. One, two. Okay, so it's a must read. Still don't know what my mom's gonna pick, but if by the time I edit this, she has picked something, the picture will be right here. But for our last roll, I landed on a must read. So I picked one of the 23 books that I must read in 2023 because I still have a few of those left and I just said that I want a romance or like a happy-go-lucky book and there's a romance on this list but yet I picked Lost You by Halen Beck which is another thriller about this boy named Ethan who is kidnapped from Libby, but the problem is that Libby doesn't think he's been kidnapped. Libby, Libby thinks he's been found. So what the heck is going on? Uh, I have read another book by Halen Beck and absolutely loved it. So it's about time that I return to this author. And this is an arc that came out in August of 2019, but I got this arc at a thrift store. It's not like it was sent to me. Although I do need catch up on arcs too, or like finished copies that uh, publishers have sent me. I need to finish those and get my net galley ratio up. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We got some books to read, so. I mean, this is definitely better than last month, along with that Audible book. But I, I feel like this is more doable. And there's no more punishments. It's only like, if I finish, then I get a reward of some sort. And I definitely do DNF books, like do not finish them if I don't like them. There are two here that I need to finish for the secret thing that we can't talk about anymore. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.